meeting of the Waitley Town Select Board to order. First order of business, voting to approve minutes from February 13th and February 22nd meeting. Any comments on either? No comments. No comments. So I would uh, move that we approve the meeting minutes from February 13th and February 22nd. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Then from payroll warrants, any comments? None. None. Public comment. We have one communication from a resident, Dan Dennehy, who writes, I respectfully suggest a timeline plan and personnel assignment for the installation of a backup generator for the town office building. With the intending change for the town administrator, this project could easily be unintentionally sidelined. Any other public comment or items not on the agenda? No? Okay, we have a public hearing, a uh, public hearing on denial of the driveway permit at grade two, Gray Oak Lane. Um, I will move to open the public hearing. You need a second? Yes. Second. In favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll begin the discussion on okay. it. Um, Thank you, Keith. Uh, yeah, the, first, just for procedural purposes, um, because of our driveway permit regulations, I, I denied it for the fact that um, mainly in that um, it's closer than 20 feet to the plot line, and it wouldn't be perpendicular to the to the perpendicular to the road as well. Um, the unique situation with this city, this location is that when the road was originally laid out, they laid out with a large cul-de-sac. At which point in time, during the process of the town planning board working to accept it, they accepted it without a cul-de-sac and changed it into what I would call a hammerhead, which is, um, and so the way the property it lays out, then that piece of property, um, it, it's very difficult to do the driveway any differently than the way he's proposing it based on the location of the house for sunlight and things of that nature. So I told JD that it's the best that we go through this process um, in favor of it being um, built as he's drawn it in. It's not a scenario where um, there's going to be like a neighborly issue because the other, the other side is the the state, correct? Yes, directly across from this is a new house and adjacent to it, that sideline is conservation land. There's no possible traffic the road ends. Right where it says no wells through 200 feet, the road ends right there. And and the, the kind of the two parallel lines coming down there that says 100 foot buffer, 50 foot buffer. From the wetlands. Those, are those... Oh, th those are buffers from a wetlands. Yes. And that's not a property line, though. No, it's not a property line. That's a buffer from the wetlands up there. Okay. So the other obvious thing of going just like this isn't the, really possible. And if you're to kind of go to, to the, the rules in the town are that the driveway has to approach at 90 degrees so that right. you get, you don't pull no blind spots. And that's okay. for a certain portion. Yes. Why not that? Why not? I'm sorry. You can. Because they don't own that land. Well, that's why I'm asking about the no, property. But they, they don't own that land. Oh, where is the property line then? Yeah, if you can show me that better. The circle continues on right here. This is state land. But this is not? This is my property. This is the property line right here. This is my client's property. Oh, I see. They I have see. to access it from over here. So they would have to drive in straight here, hairpin this way, hairpin that way to get in their house. Right. Okay. And yeah, I just, I didn't understand why this was. Okay. <laughs> I didn't understand where the property line was. So that uh, basically, if you see kind of the circle there, at the bottom it says, um, like there's an arrow that says five foot, mm -hmm. and pointing to kind of a corner. 
that kind of dot dash line is the property line. That is the property line. So that's what I didn't understand. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and um, so he can't cross um, into there. Can't yeah. cross it's that the straight part. He has to go in on that curved part. Correct. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Right. That's what I didn't understand. I didn't understand there's, a, there's a center point in the road, and the town owns a 70 foot circle about that point. Yeah. And then the house has a 50 foot setback off that circle. The house is as close to the road as it possibly can be yeah. to meet the setback. And the septic system has to be where it is. Mm -hmm. And there's no other way to place the house on the lot. And and does the, the house is already built? The foundation's in. Okay. Because so like the garage door couldn't be on the front? No, the foundation faces that way for the house. I was wondering the same thing about that. Yeah. It would still yeah. have the same situation of having to approach aiming towards the septic tank and zigzagging back to get to it. Yeah. So yeah. what you've got drawn here is how you propose to build it? Correct. And is there enough room for a car to make that sharp 90 degree? There is. There's going to be the a turn in. It's going to expand a little bit on the side. We have to be very vigilant for the wetland setback and go to Conservation Commission and make sure that they're going to allow us to do that. But we're going to meet their requirements. Right now, there's plenty of room there. It doesn't yeah. seem it just by sketch yeah. there. It might be a tad out of scale, but there's plenty of room to make it yeah. good. Okay. And and right. kind of yeah. somebody was yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, it also lets you plow the skill past the garage door and turn into it, which we try to do when we build houses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if you all were around and paying attention when the Pine Plains area, that whole development went in. Mm -hmm. One of the things they did was they had kind of smaller lots and closer houses. Mm -hmm. So things are tighter there mm -hmm. because they set aside a bunch of other land with conservation, uh, kind of in lieu of having a bunch of one acre lots yeah, that so took up a bunch. So, yeah. so there's a reason why the lots are yeah. crowded like that. And yeah. it was uh, something right. that was went to the planning board. I remember taking <laughs> the planning board meetings as an FCAT because I volunteered. Yeah, had, had it been possible to redraw that line and the town sell that land back to my clients, they would have placed the house in a much different spot in the lot. Yeah. Right. I don't know if you want to look at the bigger picture. Oh, yeah. That's yeah what that that would I would like lot. to know what the hammerhead is. And that's well, the, it's really like, little, so I don't think the hammerhead is completely on here. No, it's yeah. sketched in here. Okay. So, yeah. so this is the lot 24. The hammerhead is where you just pull in and back up, or you pull by and back in and turn around. Okay, so it's not yeah. as drawn there. Right. Originally, it was going to be the full circle, so a truck could come in and just do a complete yeah. circle. Yeah. Because of the massive size of that, they, they allowed, the planning board allowed him to put in what we call a hammerhead, which is where you can yeah. back in perpendicular. So, around. where is this house? It's this line right here. This is the property line. Yeah. yeah. This, this oops, maybe you can probably push it better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. So this is radius right here. The driveway comes in right here where that swivel line is. And again, the see way oh, there, okay. way they're even showing it on this original mm -hmm. is closer than 20 feet because that was all given to the state. <coughs> It just ends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just ends. Okay, sorry. And so that's why, based on yeah. the situation he's in, I felt that there's no there's no detrimental. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there doesn't appear like to be a, a reasonable alternative. Yeah, and the reason for the regulation is primarily, I think, for safety and for um, but safety probably on a road. Like, that's his particular. If it was on a more of a traveled lane, yeah, yeah. To, so that you're not coming out at a at such an angle that you yeah. pull out into the street without being able to look over your shoulder with yeah. someone coming track. Do you have any safety concerns about this? No, it's based on the fact that, it, like on the dead end, is the, the 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 road itself is like the driveway to begin with. Yeah. So there there can't be any traffic coming in. 
no through traffic. traffic. Right, right, yeah. And there's no through traffic. Yeah. It's, yeah. Correct. Okay. Okay. I think all my questions are answered. Yep. Well, okay. same. Any other comments? No. So I would just, my objection is just to recommend that you grant the variance and I would go ahead and approve it. Okay. Do we need to close the hearing first? Yeah. I move that we close the hearing. Second. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Okay. No. And do we need to move the okay. to move on? Here, okay. I'll move it, please. <laughs> I move that we grant the variance for the uh, driveway application, application submitted by JDR Builders for the installation of a driveway at New Great Oak Lane. Second. Any further discussion? None. All in favor? Aye. 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 Just technically, you guys are granting the variance to Stephen and Margaret Hart, the landowners. Not, well, no, well, we're just granting the variance on the property. The property. On the property. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. They, on the property just, at, at two grave yeah. 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 The with the property okay. yeah. of the owners. Thank you very Thank much. You. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Next item. Please, please to welcome Joshua Sparks, the new chief of the South County EMS service. Thank you. Started on February 7th, I believe. Uh, February 5th, 7th, something, something, something like that. that. Yeah. It's been a whirlwind. Yeah, it, it is a whirlwind. Uh, yeah. Thank you for uh, having me here tonight. Um, no, we're so happy you could come. Yeah. Uh, really, the, the point of this is just to be able to put a face to a name. Um, Brad, of course, you're on the Board of Oversight for South County, so we've met and uh, spent some time together. Um, but I wanted to introduce myself to everybody else and to the community, whoever else may be watching. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, if anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me at any point. Um, you know where to find me, some account. Um, mm -hmm. And that's really it. Uh, the same time. Can you just give us a brief rundown of what your plans or thoughts are for? Uh, sure. So next, next, you know, just ongoing with South County EMS. For sure. So uh, South County EMS is a pretty remarkable organization uh, that uh, is unique. Uh, there are not a lot of pre-hospital emergency care programs like what these three towns enjoy. Uh, I feel that uh, all three towns are probably lucky. So uh, they have a very dedicated uh, staff, uh, crew members, EMTs, and paramedics. Uh, and they have this outstanding legacy right now uh, that I'm walking into uh, really putting patient care and safety and community advocacy first. That's unusual in a landscape that is dominated by a for profit healthcare. So that's wonderful for me, right? Mm -hmm. To walk into something like that. Um, so really, I feel my role at this point is to be a steward and nurture that. Uh, at the same time, uh, I have a period of exploration uh, ahead of me that involves just assessment and evaluation of the organization to try and improve efficiencies to continue improving uh, quality free hospital care um, and to make sure that residents of all three communities um, are getting the money for it, for sure. Um, you know, over time, I think we will see some necessary changes. Um, and as those develop, uh, I'll certainly keep everybody informed. But really, right now, it's observation on my end. I will say we've made one change uh, so far since uh, I've come in that uh, we've become available for mutual aid intercepts, regardless of color, regardless of time of day, regardless of our staffing. Uh, this is not only to remove compliance uh, with, um, with the CMR, but uh, also because there's a uh, ethical obligation uh, that we're available to our mutual aid partners. Um, 
So that has seen an increase in our volume, but thankfully it has not seen um, change to where we have been missing calls in our primary service area. So uh, I suspect that that will continue to be the case uh, in any sense. We're in a really good position to be able to offer that. Uh, so I hope to do more of that. Okay. And we will see you again when we have our budget hearing through the Finance Committee, yeah. and we can get into revenues and costs at that point. Sounds like fun. <laughs> oh, well, always. Yeah. Every year is the most fun. Okay. So that's all. If you don't have any other questions, uh, it's nice to meet everybody. Well, thanks thanks for having me. Thanks, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, COVID rapid tests continue to be available as COVID continues to be an issue. Uh, old business review, discuss, and vote on appointment of interim town administrator. Check. We have already done that. Yay. Uh, oh, we did. Last, last okay. meeting. Uh, nice thing. We did the appointment, even though. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Yep. That's exactly what we did for the interim meeting. town administrators. Yeah. 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 Oh, and, and, that, and that was for everybody watching. That yes. was. Oh yes, Trish uh, uh, Van Tessie and uh, 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 what's the other person's name again? Yeah. Lynn Sibley, of course. And we met. Brian and I met with them yesterday, and they are. Splitting up the job time wise and in mm -hmm. terms of uh, you know, yeah. responsibilities. And yeah. we will get filled in on that, I guess, when Chris starts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you fill in some of the, the, yeah. the details for their program? Well, what I, so this is, this is really good. Do we have to be here? Yeah. Um, well, so after a friend and I met Lynn and Trisha, uh, met met for a while, and they they um, separated out. You know what they were gonna do, and, and so this is from what I know is that is that Trish is gonna take the finance part of it. Okay. Um, which is really the the, the finance and the budgeting in that part, uh -huh. and I think Lynn's gonna do more of the, the data. It, it's really a continuation of what of what mm -hmm. she's doing, more of the day to day stuff. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And then they're gonna split up some of the project. Mm -hmm. I think okay. that Trisha figures to be here Mondays and Tuesdays. And split Wednesday. And split Wednesday, and then we'll be here half of Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, they they've known each other a long time and seem to work well together. Yeah, and I felt that they know enough of the 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 major projects that need attention within yeah. the short term. <laughs> The, the couple of months because they were both willing to go through June 30th. Yeah. Maybe a little longer if we had to beg and plead, but um, mm -hmm. their goal is to, yeah. to, to be out June 30th. Mm -hmm. um, so my plan is to have a, I don't know how many pages it's going to take up, but probably a lot mm -hmm. of a written, you know, it'll be my written town administrator updates pretty much <laughs> um, that can be left for the interim. Um, TAs as well as the whoever comes in next. Yeah. Um, no, okay. So that will. Uh, but but we talked about most of the important you know the important projects that the ones that have are currently going with the Hayden Road project and mm -hmm. obviously solar right. Um, you know but the other ones too that are escaping me right now but I put together the list that I need to and we talked about it. You know, we'll have to schedule a new meeting with the highway. The highway. The highway garage. Question the right Okay. But I think it'll be a, I think it'll be a smooth transition to, to Lynn and Patricia for sure. Okay. Good. No, I appreciate what you put in that in, in writing. Yes. Yeah. That'll, that'll be very helpful. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No business. Review, discuss, and vote on whether to continue as a member of the Upper Pioneer Valley Veterans Services District for an additional two years. Um, um, my understanding is this 
has gone really well. Is that is there, have we heard anything to the contrary? We have not. Um, I would recommend that we continue to work with the uh, the veterans services district. Proud of what we built. Yeah, I've heard of no no issues with that at all. So you know, it was certainly better than what we had before. Right? Yeah. And um and I, yeah, they've actually been in touch once or twice yeah. to put something in the scoop. So they they do reach out. That's good. Any other comments? No. It's a very uh very uh there's not a lot of trained veteran service agents out there and the requirement that towns have it. You know, mm -hmm. have a lot of work, you know, for each town. So that's why you see how many of the towns we have here. Yeah. A bunch. Yeah, 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 the whole margin pull. Yeah. 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 Okay. No, well, I would move that we um uh Vote to continue as members of the Upper Pioneer Valley Veteran Services District for an bit for two years. A second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, review, discuss, and vote on whether to request that the Board of Assessment release surplus funds contained in the overlay reserve account. Brian, can you explain yeah, what I can yeah, explain yeah, that. That So each fiscal year on the tax recap sheet. Uh, the town appropriates a certain sum of money that they that the board of assessors thinks will cover any tax abatements or exemptions that they issue throughout the year. So, because if we didn't and they we had the the tax levy right on the dollar, and then they started issuing mm -hmm. essentially refunds from that, um, we wouldn't have enough money. So there's a it's really a built-in cushion of funds. So. But so each year that's not all spent and it remains in the account. So that fund builds up after time, um, after after each year. And um, there's a process with master in a law where either the board of assessors are on their own initiative or at the request of the chief executive, which in this town will be the select board, mm -hmm. can request that the board of assessors um, calculate the uh surplus uh the surplus funds in the overlay account mm -hmm. yeah. and under master of law once that request is made by the, the 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 select board the board of assessors have 10 days to do the calculation and it's spelled out yeah. Yeah. Yeah, i wouldn't want really the details about it but um it's so they need to calculate what that sum of money is and report back to the select board and the board of assessors also needs to take a vote uh, within that 10 day period as to how much um they want to release from the from the overlay account we did this once before when um this was a really unique situation when the town set aside money that um Covestro was paying in and there was an art there was a dispute over whether um Covestro should have been paying taxes to us mm -hmm. to the town or to the state mm -hmm. and it turned out they were supposed to be paying to the state so that money was set aside just in case it was ever requested to come back. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't. So it was it was released probably five mm -hmm. years ago, maybe. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the same process. Um, but I believe it's I, don't quote me on this, but if I I believe it's over a hundred thousand dollars surplus that, that's there. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty significant amount. Yeah, I'm just gonna ask whether that yeah, um, an estimate. Yeah. And then they get to decide how much of that. Right. And we don't get to say, that's not enough, we want more. Or right. there, is there some back and forth on that? Um, there could be. It's the Board of Assessors that need to vote. <laughs> how much is generally put into that fund every year? It's a quick 30,000. I, I don't know how much is spent okay. every year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, actually, I think last year we did twenty thousand because yeah, that's the first time the account was like, "Hey, there's a lot of there's a, a good amount of money in this so yeah. account now." Um, okay, so and then that and money, actually, I mean, and they're inclined to be reasonable, do you think? Yeah, I think so. Uh, the money, it, the calculation looks at really anticipated any anticipated yeah. you know additional expenses that might come out of that. You know, the money from from each fiscal year based on right. maybe there's a I don't think there is but maybe there's an outstanding 
uh, claim in uh, how can this escape me? The state agency uh, appellate, no, um, appellate tax court would. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, so there, there might be some things, particular situations that yeah. we can estimate uh, and conservatively what they would need. Right. Okay. And they should. I mean, they should reserve any of that money if they if they reasonably yeah. believe that there's going to be an expense to it. Yeah. Other than that, I, there's not really any purpose to withholding a lot of money. And presumably in this year's budget, there will be that twenty or thirty thousand um, in you know, to for twenty five. So for, for twenty four for, for twenty five for upcoming twenty five. Right. Yeah, they'll have to okay some amount. Yeah. For FY twenty four, I think I think they said I think they said aside twenty thousand instead of the thirty thousand this fiscal year. Okay. And you yeah. probably said, but can you explain? Well, why we would be requesting it? It's just because there's a it's, significant amount of money yeah, in there and why sitting, it sit. Yeah, it's just sitting in the account. Yeah. With really no no purpose. Okay. Um, and and yeah. if we, and if we get it, it goes to free cash, presumably. So they would vote to release yeah. it. So yeah, so they would vote to release it, mm -hmm. and then for this fiscal year, it could be spent with an appropriation at at town meeting. Mm -hmm. Um if if there's if it's not if it's released and not spent this year, then it would at the end of, at the end of this fiscal year it would roll over into free cash. Mm -hmm. So it would be available immediately for appropriation, whether it's this year or mm -hmm. part of free cash. Oftentimes we have to wait for next fund right, for this. Some right. most often most often we need to wait if it's released funds, most often times we need to wait, mm -hmm. you know, for that until that free cash is certified the following fiscal year, but not not in this instance. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I move that we request that the Board of Assessors release surplus funds contained in the overlay reserve account. I'll second that. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 So we would ex we would expect at the next meeting that there should be a report from the assessors that mm -hmm. with that amount and with that calculation completed, because that would be more obviously more than the ten days. Okay, uh, so let board liaison updates. The only update I have is the meeting we had this morning with uh, the administrators screening committee for the new town administrator, and that was Chief Savini and Amy Schrader. We uh, finalized the job description and I gave it to Brian, and hopefully, it will be. Posted. Yeah, it's our, uh, it's not our first thing to do tomorrow morning. Okay, so we're going to post in. Um, well, actually, one of the questions I have, uh, we're going to post on the MMA yeah. website. Um, actually, uh, town website, Facebook. Um, obviously, we'll post it here. The question is, I guess, recorder, is that any preference for both? Let's see if there's a cost to redoing them both. Um, I think the Gazette has a probably a wider wider circulation. I mean, it's wider wider circulation, but, but yeah. what what is the rough cost? Like, like a hundred dollars, or I think so. Uh, do you know if the assessors on that? Um, I can look it up really quick off the top of my head. I don't remember, um, but I'm more yeah, we had their fund for so similar so to add like the North Farms was well, like a hundred and seven. Yeah, so no, <laughs> but I just don't know for um but that was a one time like for the ad we run right, more gonna, than once. We're gonna run it once on the weekend and once during the week. Yeah. So I think given the importance we should yeah, run I, the ad in both. Yeah. I would agree. With that. I think that it is it's on such a outrageous expense. Right. I think that's probably with that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that. Um, I'm sorry, the assessors, we just posted that for the recorder at 317, that runs twice. So that's something that mm -hmm. guys. Okay. But that's the recorder. That, that, that was the recorder. That was, I just looked it up. I, that's okay. the invoice I got for today. Okay. And then uh, the is that is about the same, or do they actually charge more? I'm yeah. unfamiliar with them, so. Charge a little bit more. I would imagine uh, they got a Chris, I, know. I don't know, but do you want me to ask tomorrow? I can I can let Fred know. Yeah. 
Sure. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, ask if it's uh, same for recorder and gazette and prices. Yeah. It, it like, is it buy one, get one free? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a good question. <laughs> Yeah, I'll get the prices for you. Yeah. No, thanks. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Uh, yeah, and no. and we're figuring to get this posted with the return for resumes of April April first at the latest. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. That sounds okay. good. And I, I I like that timeline. I think it. Yeah. If we have some, um, we give people some time for getting applications in, and we've got still after that the whole month of April, May, and June, and June yeah. for interviews and deciding and transition. And, and the, pro the process will be the screening committee will go through resumes mm -hmm. and hopefully narrow it down to you know, two, three, four yeah. that will then come to us yeah. for yeah. interviewing. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. All right, very good. Uh, Joyce, any? Oh, um, I, I will we'll have another uh, South County Senior Center Blue meeting on Thursday. So I don't have any to report from that since last time. Um, but I I did my homework. My homework was to be in touch with our Council on Aging and talk to them about uh, how we might integrate Council on Aging folks into the um, into the Senior Center because we're again reviewing kind of our structure looking at things where we might want to change our IMA. Um, we've gotten some uh, consultant to give us some suggestions. And one of the things is to get more input from people who are not already on boards of SLAD. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we're thinking maybe the Council on Aging would be a good place for each town to um, focus to have, a, have them select someone who can, um, who can participate in the board as well. Okay. It's, it's under consideration. It's not, it's not a done deal or anything. But that's the kind of things we're thinking of these days. Okay. Sounds good. Um, I have no updates. The, um, I... Okay. Okay. Yeah. The, the, the water department is always a mystery <laughs> when, when they're going to meet. So, yeah. But I've been at meetings lately and it's been good. So. Okay. And time administrator updates. Industry. <laughs> sure. Um, well, I'll, obviously, I'll have really comprehensive ones. Any, everything I know will be on that paper, but yeah. <laughs> um, just uh, briefly, uh, personnel committee met last night and we made it through the first draft of the revised personnel policies. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to compile, I'll make those edits and changes uh, before I head out. Um, and I think our plan was to. Uh, circulate the first draft uh, to department heads and uh, the personnel committee simultaneously with the comments. Um, so that is moving forward. Um, and just an uh, uh, update on the Havenville Road reconstruction project. There was the issue of the soil mill walls, and whether those would be considered Article 97 impacts. We have a email back from EOEA saying that, that we tend to ignore the soil mill walls for the purposes of Article 97. Yeah, which is good. Yeah, so it prevails. Um, and this really goes to how much how much land we need to we need to provide in mitigation. Article 97 wants a well, yeah. they, they want at least a one for one swap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In terms of value, dollar value and conservation value. Which always means it's more than a one for one. Yeah. Um, but this would have increased it significantly because we'd be, you know, we'd be, we would just you, have you can't do it yeah, right. Right. Yeah. 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 So it would just be this longer uh, easement that we would need to take. Mm -hmm. We still need easement because we want, you know, we want the legal right in the future to uh, maintain and replace those nails as needed. But in terms of the actual, mitigation that we have to do. I went. So that that I now have more faith in government. <laughs> it took a long time to get here. It took a heck of a long time to get to the the point of soil nails are not going to be considered a taking yeah. on land. 
Uh, so okay. that was that was the opinion that I received via email. Not sure if everybody will agree with that opinion, but um, so uh, it's, it's what we what we exactly yeah. what we mm -hmm. put the go on. Um, and then just a reminder that, and I'll, I'll also send this report out to the select board and finance committee that the capital Improvement planning committee did finish their recommendations and their report. So that should I'll make sure that's out um, as well. And they're basically making a list of priorities, the yeah. prioritizing projects. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't see that. So. And I did update the um, the CLFRF, or the mm -hmm. yeah. book spreadsheet, and I did send it out to um, send out for Fred and the, the college and town administrators that are on the on the campaign page. There's about unobligated, so there's about 132. There's going to be some coming back from projects that haven't spent, you know, all of their money. But oh, okay. um, I would say between 130 and 150, probably. Okay. Yeah, I, I send you the list of things that seem to be pretty much completed. Yeah. Okay. So I would think there's about that much money that. And again, it needs to be obligated by uh, December mm -hmm. uh, 30th, 31st, um, 2024. So we'll have to do it. This yeah. is and year. we'll probably have to coordinate with the Finance Committee and the budget as to what mm -hmm. would come out of those funds and what right. mm -hmm. will have to come yeah. out of the budget. So we might see at our March 12th meeting, we might get a look at what the Capital Committee is. Um, yeah, well, the capital committee still just they sets just, priorities. You're right. Doesn't What's, take into account funding yeah. at all. No, I agree. But we'll see what their priorities are. Mm -hmm. That that might be helpful to them. Yes. Yeah. In total, they could easily spend that money. Yeah. 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 I would imagine. Yeah. Uh, and, and just so when we say obligate, we mean that it needs to be under contract um, for services. So I think what's going to be a little tricky is you have some of these, some of these projects, existing projects. Um, we just we just need to make sure that that there's a contract signed by June thirtieth. There's a contract signed by December December, December thirtieth. Yeah. And some of these are sort of like pieces, right? There's different pieces to the project that they need to get done. You might think about setting even an earlier deadline for some of these projects to, uh -huh. yeah. just so that there's some wiggle room at the end where it's not. We have money and because ob obligation means it's under contract, but yeah. it, it's, a, it, yeah. it's under contract, it's been purchased, so right, not just appropriate, right? So, I would recommend that there be some deadline, whatever it would be the end of October or something that would, and mm -hmm. we may just take that into consideration to decide what, yeah, fund is going to fund is going right. to pay for what project. Yeah, if there's something that can't be, yeah, I know that the elementary school HVAC. System is going to be on the uh, capital committee's list, but that's the kind of thing that might not be might not obligated. Be. You know, might not be under contract. Might not be under contract right. so quickly. Right. So you would want, yeah, you would want to get it. You, right. So we wouldn't want to use this money to pay for that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Anything else? Um. I don't think I have anything else. No. Anything else? No. I just have one more thing, and that is to note that this is Brian Domina's last meeting Oops. at the administrator leaving for the town of Hampton. It has been about seven years. Yeah. Seven years. And mm -hmm. seven, seven years here, and Brian has done a great job for the town, and I want to thank him oh, yes, for absolutely. his service to the town. Good luck in the future. Thank you very much. It's been it's been a good seven years for sure. Yeah. Never thought it'd be on Zoom when I took this shot. <laughs> <laughs> All the world has changed. There yeah. was no Zoom. <laughs> you took yeah, shot, I, right. Yeah. I don't know. I I was using Zoom when you took this shot. <laughs> <laughs> I was an early Zoom adopter, though. Yeah. yeah. We did adopt it pretty quick here. That helped. Yeah, they, that did help. Yeah. yeah. I remember those first frantic weeks with him. Yeah, but we had practiced for the first time with Stockholm. We were using Zoom. That's true. So, 
Okay. Well, I, move, I move that we adjourn this meeting. I second. Any discussion? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Robert.